The Rise and Fall of Former Manchester City Wonder Kid Adam Johnson was a professional footballer who played for Sunderland in the England national team. His career came to an abrupt end in 2016 due to criminal charges related to sexual activity with a minor. WhatsApp messages played a crucial role in the investigation and subsequent trial. The case began in December 2014 when Johnson first made contact with a 15-year-old girl who was a fan of Sunderland Football Club. Their initial interaction occurred outside the Stadium of Light, where Johnson gave the girl a signed shirt. Following this meeting, they began exchanging messages on social media platforms, including WhatsApp. Over the next few months, their communication intensified. The WhatsApp messages between Johnson and the girl became increasingly flirtatious and sexual in nature. These messages would later serve as key evidence in the case against Johnson. In January 2015, Johnson arranged to meet the girl in his car in a secluded area. During this meeting, sexual activity occurred. A second meeting took place in February 2015, where further sexual activity allegedly took place. The girl confided in her friends about her encounters with Johnson and eventually the information reached her parents. They reported the matter to the police in February 2015. Johnson was arrested on March 2, 2015, at his home in Castle Eden, County Durham. During the initial investigation, police seized Johnson's mobile phone and other electronic devices. Forensic analysis of these devices revealed the extent of his communication with the girl, including the WhatsApp messages that would prove crucial to the case. Johnson was initially suspended by Sunderland AFC but was later reinstated and continued to play for the team while on bail. This decision by the club would later face significant criticism. As the case progressed, the WhatsApp messages between Johnson and the girl became a central focus of the investigation. These messages revealed the nature of their relationship and Johnson's awareness of the girl's age. Some of the messages contained explicit sexual content and discussions about meeting in person. In February 2016, Johnson's trial began at Bradford Crown Court. During the trial, the prosecution presented the WhatsApp messages as evidence of Johnson's grooming behavior and his knowledge of the girl's age. The messages showed that Johnson had asked for the girl's age and had been informed that she was 15. The trial also revealed that Johnson had searched online for the legal age of consent, indicating his awareness of the potential legal issues surrounding his actions. This evidence combined with the WhatsApp messages painted a damaging picture of Johnson's conduct. Throughout the trial, Johnson admitted to one count of sexual activity with a child kissing and one count of grooming. However, he denied two more serious charges of sexual activity with a child. The WhatsApp messages played a crucial role in demonstrating Johnson's intent and his awareness of the girl's age. They showed a pattern of grooming behavior with Johnson complimenting the girl, discussing sexual matters, and arranging meetings. On March 2, 2016, after a three-week trial, the jury found Johnson guilty of sexual activity with a child. He was acquitted on a charge of another, more serious sexual act. On March 24, 2016, Johnson was sentenced to six years in prison. The judge described Johnson's actions as a calculated, considered, and carefully orchestrated abuse the judge also noted the severe psychological harm caused to the victim. The case had significant repercussions beyond the legal proceedings. Sunderland AFC faced criticism for allowing Johnson to continue playing while on bail. The club's chief executive resigned in the wake of the scandal. Johnson's conviction also led to the termination of his contract with Sunderland and effectively ended his professional football career. His reputation was irreparably damaged, and he was stripped of his 12 England caps. The case highlighted the dangers of online grooming and the importance of safeguarding young people in the digital age. It also raised questions about the responsibility of football clubs and sports organizations in handling such situations. The role of WhatsApp and other social media platforms in facilitating communication between potential abusers and young people became a topic of public discussion. The case underscored the need for increased awareness among parents, educators, and young people about online safety and the potential risks of social media interactions. Johnson's case also sparked debates about celebrity culture and the perceived immunity of famous athletes. It highlighted how some individuals might exploit their status to take advantage of vulnerable fans. 
During his time in prison, Johnson reportedly participated in a sex offender treatment program. He was released on license in March 2019, after serving half of his six-year sentence. Upon release, he was subject to strict license conditions, including restrictions on contact with the victim and her family. The aftermath of the case continued to affect Johnson's life post-release. His attempts to rebuild his career faced significant obstacles due to his criminal record and the nature of his offenses. Many clubs were unwilling to associate themselves with him due to the negative publicity and moral concerns. The victim in the case, who cannot be named for legal reasons, faced significant challenges in the aftermath of the trial. The high-profile nature of the case and Johnson's celebrity status led to intense media scrutiny and public interest. This attention, combined with the trauma of the abuse and the stress of the legal proceedings, had a profound impact on her well-being. The case also had wider implications for football culture and safeguarding practices within the sport. It led to increased scrutiny of how clubs handle allegations of misconduct against their players and prompted calls for more robust child protection measures in football and other sports. In the years following Johnson's conviction, there has been a greater emphasis on educating young footballers about appropriate behavior, consent, and the responsibilities that come with their public profile. Many clubs have implemented more comprehensive training programs on these issues. The case serves as a stark reminder of the power imbalance that can exist between celebrities and their fans, especially when those fans are minors. It highlighted the need for stricter regulations and more effective safeguarding measures to protect vulnerable individuals from exploitation. From a legal perspective, the Johnson case underscored the importance of digital evidence in modern criminal investigations. The WhatsApp messages provided crucial insights into the nature of Johnson's relationship with the victim and his state of mind. This aspect of the case has been studied in legal circles as an example of how digital communications can be used as evidence in criminal proceedings. The case also sparked discussions about privacy and the extent to which personal communications can be used in court. While the messages were crucial to securing a conviction in this case, it raised questions about the balance between privacy rights and the needs of criminal investigations. In the broader context of child protection, the Johnson case contributed to ongoing efforts to combat online grooming. It highlighted how seemingly innocuous interactions on social media can escalate into abusive situations, especially when there's a significant age or power difference between the parties involved. The case has been used as a cautionary tale in educational programs aimed at young people, highlighting the potential dangers of online interactions with strangers or authority figures. It has also been used to educate parents and caregivers about the importance of monitoring their children's online activities and being aware of potential warning signs of grooming. For the football industry, the case led to a re-evaluation of how clubs handle allegations of misconduct against their players. Many organizations have since implemented stricter policies and more thorough background checks. There's also been an increased focus on the moral responsibilities of clubs towards their young fans and the wider community. The long-term impact of the case on Johnson's life has been profound. Beyond the immediate consequences of his imprisonment and the end of his football career, he faces ongoing challenges in terms of public perception and future employment prospects. His case serves as a stark example of how a single series of poor decisions can have life-altering consequences, regardless of one's talent or previous success. For the victim, the impact of the abuse and the subsequent legal proceedings has been long-lasting. While her identity has been protected, the high-profile nature of the case has made it challenging for her to move on. The case highlights the importance of providing long-term support for victims of abuse particularly in high-profile cases where media attention can exacerbate the trauma. In conclusion, the Adam Johnson case, centered around inappropriate WhatsApp communications and subsequent criminal actions, serves as a powerful cautionary tale. It highlights the dangers of online grooming, the responsibilities that come with celebrity status, and the crucial role of digital evidence in modern criminal investigations. The case has had far-reaching implications for football culture safeguarding practices in sports, and broader discussions about child protection in the digital age. It continues to be referenced in discussions about online safety, celebrity culture, and the legal system's handling of cases involving digital evidence. The moral lessons to take home from this Adam Johnson's case are as follows. 
1. Power and responsibility individuals in positions of power or celebrity status have a heightened responsibility to behave ethically. Johnson's status as a professional footballer gave him influence over young fans which he abused. 2. Age of consent laws exist for a reason these laws are designed to protect minors who may not have the maturity to make informed decisions about sexual relationships, especially with adults. 3. Online interactions can have real-world consequences what may seem like just chatting online can escalate into harmful real-world actions. Digital communications are not separate from reality. 4. Grooming is a serious issue the case highlights how grooming can occur gradually, with an adult building trust and manipulating a minor over time. 5. Importance of digital literacy and online safety young people need to be educated about potential online dangers and how to recognize inappropriate behavior from adults. 6. Accountability for one's actions regardless of fame or talent. Individuals are responsible for their choices and must face the consequences of illegal or unethical behavior. 7. Institutional responsibility organizations like football clubs have a duty to take allegations seriously and prioritize the safety of vulnerable individuals over their own interests. 8. Long-term consequences of actions poor decisions can have life-altering impacts, affecting careers, relationships, and personal freedom. 9. Consent and power dynamics The case underscores the importance of understanding consent and the inherent power imbalance between adults and minors. 10. Ethical use of technology platforms like WhatsApp can be misused for harmful purposes, highlighting the need for responsible use of technology. 11. Importance of reporting suspicions the case emerged because people reported their concerns, emphasizing the importance of speaking up when something seems wrong. 12. Victim impacts such cases can have severe and long-lasting effects on victims, highlighting the need for support systems and understanding. These lessons underscore the importance of ethical behavior, responsible use of influence, and the protection of vulnerable individuals in our society. This story share a lot of similarities with the Benzema and Ribery story, but in the case of Adam Johnson, there was no lie told in good faith. Thanks for watching and kindly subscribe to this channel if you want to see more videos like this.